What's going on guys, Victor here. I got a sponsored video today. Big thank you to Food Saver for sponsoring this video, which I will get into a little bit later. But I'm out here with my good buddy, Jason. What's going on guys? Who I have fished with a ton in the past. We've caught a ton of fish together, including a giant king. Remember that off of Jupiter? Yeah, that was awesome, man. I do remember that, like it was yesterday almost. <laughs> We've had some good memories together and we got his girlfriend, Sierra, up there. Hello. <laughs> and then of course we have Babe behind the camera. So I'm gonna show you guys, we're just gonna jump in today's video and just get right into fishing. No fancy B-roll or anything. Jason is working a jig and this is actually the first time I've live baited out of the home waters this year. I have some 40 pound leader, a little bit of wire, and then a 5.0 live bait hook. We're gonna come over here into our live well. And big thank you to Jason who hooked it up with the baits. He caught these big juicy baits the other day. Check this out. This gets me excited. A big live pilchard. So I'm gonna hook them just like this. When I'm drifting, I like to hook them in the throat. And that way they'll swim down. They'll feel that pressure. They'll feel the resistance and they'll wanna go down. So I'm just gonna send them out, cast them away from the boat. And as you guys see, there is so much seaweed out here. The last few weeks, for some reason, there's just been a ton of seaweed. We've had a lot of east wind, so it's made it kind of hard to fish in terms of drift fishing, especially when you're flatlining. Because when you're flatlining, your lines are on top and you don't wanna get seaweed on your line. So the plan today is try to put a few muttons in the boat, kings, black fins, it's springtime, you never know what you're gonna get. While we got our flat lines out, I have a pilchard I'm gonna hook through the nose and I want this guy to swim freely and this is gonna be a bottom bait. This is where we're gonna to try to catch our muttons with but you can catch kingfish and stuff on them too. A lot, nice long leader, eight ounces of lead, it's our standard bottom rig and we're gonna drop them down nice and slow because if you drop them down too fast what will happen is your bait will spin, it'll twirl up all over your line. Oh, where it's on, it's on, on, on! There we go. Get him, Jason. I didn't really set the hook, I kinda just... Rodney did it for you. Yeah, Rodney did all the work. Don't you love it when you're filming something and explaining and then all of a sudden the rod goes off and you actually get the hit on video? That's exciting. Nice kingfish. Oh yeah, we got a king. Excuse me. There's the orange seaweed jungle. Right? Real Dude, look at this little mini gap. Dude, that thing's a baller. Uh-oh. That is a nice little king. And a nice little tangle. Come with it. <laughs> there we go! First fish in the boat. Ten minutes of fishing. That's what's up, Jason. Bad, man. Nice. Nice. That's the difference between live bait and dead bait and live bait. It's like instant. Exciting. Good Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. First fish in the boat. Middle of the day bite. Live pilchard, and I love hearing that drag scream. So let's get some more. Got to work this one nice and slow because I don't have wire on. Babe, you want to hand me that rod? Oh, this doesn't feel very kingy. Feels much heavier than a king. Yeah. yeah, it's a bonita. It's a bonita party. Mm. Full grown bonita on the Full hand grown, line. Full grown, baby. Full grown bonita on the hand line. Oh. Zero mackerel on. That'll eat. That'll eat. That'll do just fine. All right, guys. Second mackerel species. Oh, look at his stomach. Stomach oh. just shot out like that. You see that? Zero mackerel, out you. different than a Spanish mackerel. They have that distinct bar going down them. Spanish mackerel are here more in the winter time and in the fall and zero mackerel are pretty much here year round and these are unregulated. You can keep two per person per day or hundred pounds in Florida, whichever is greater. So we're gonna go put this guy in the box as well. I think so. That's the mutton we're looking for. I've been fishing bottom all day. I think it's a mutton at least. Oh, it's a mine, mine, all right. A little one. <laughs> Man, he's small. You hardly catch him that small anymore. 
know what you got, babe? We got on a sale. Well, things were starting to look really bleak. We actually headed back in the inlet. There, there, there. Hence the shirt change. Oh, Rex sales jumping over there. As I was saying, we went back in the inlet to grab more map, grab more bait because during the middle of the day, we were getting just tons. No. Oh, no. Oh. I think it had too much seaweed on it. Salad on the line. That sucks. Salad on the line got the best of us. Let's get another one. Brooke just pulled hook on the sailfish. There's a ton of seaweed right now because it looked like her line was headed that way, but the sailfish was over there. You can't physically catch up to it enough because there's just so much damn seaweed piles on your line. Can't do anything about it. Oh, I hope this is a mutton. I dropped down a little baby sardine to the very bottom. Yeah. Brookie just lost her sail, pulled hook, and now- No, no, no. I didn't pull hook. I freighted me <laughs> off. It was jumping like crazy. It must've got wrapped in the line. And when I reeled it in, I was completely frayed off. So the no, mutton. the hook didn't pull. Correction. Mutton, yes. just not the right size. Yes. <laughs> wow, look at how wow. lit up he is. Red. Yeah, red. That's a pretty fish. Look at how lit up this guy Wait, is. Wait, you should have measured that. No, he's yeah. he's under. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, yeah this might be the reddest mutton oh. I've ever caught. Wow. Look at that thing. Oh, no, it's like Beautiful. Like inches, yeah. <laughs> he was so excited. There he goes. This was in the seaweed. All the sargasm that you guys see right here, this is all full of life. Shrimp, crabs, fish. There's a little crab in here. Shake it out. You would never even know he's in there. He blends whoa. in perfectly with it. Whoa, Look whoa, at whoa. that. Oh, I it. <laughs> this might be the Hail Mary fish of the day. We, oh, those are some big tail beats. See that hot tip? I had just said that I didn't catch anything today, that I had hooked that sail but then lost it. Great, throw in the towel. So we'll see. We had a real, it had a really good run when I first hooked it. She literally was like, guys, I didn't catch anything today. Like a minute later, this happens. And those big tail beats, you guys see the tip of that rod? It's usually synonymous with the black fin tuna, what they'll do is they'll go down and then they'll kind of circle pinwheel and they'll, they just do that boom, boom, boom. You really feel it on your line. So I'm rooting for you, babe. Get him in. Yeah, you got him. And check this out, guys. Look behind us. This is what us Floridians get to enjoy on the daily. Check out that sunset behind us. Tell me that's not beautiful. That right there, right over there, that's Boca Inlet. And then way over there, the lighthouse you guys always see us go out of, way over there, that is Hillsboro Inlet. Was that on oh. the wire? On the wire. <laughs> on the wire. Oh, it was on the wire. This guy right here, Jason, doesn't believe in wire. Apparently. A lot of people don't. I don't fish wire anymore. <laughs> Those days are over. He kept saying, dude, you guys can't be fishing wire. Tunas don't eat wire. Well, we're gonna prove him wrong right there. How's my favorite YouTuber doing? You're trying to come around this way. Who, me? Who, you? Yeah. I'm excited. I'm ready to see this fish. It's nice and easy. Yeah. Don't want to take any chances on losing it. There we go. Oh! Oh! Fell off the path at the last minute. Put it one. All right, guys. Well, we had a fun day out on the water. It was kind of slow. We had a lot of bites, but we missed some fish. And this was a great way to finally end the day, just as the sun was setting, with a nice, healthy tuna. As Brooke said, it was a nice way to end the day. Good job, babe. We'll see you guys back at the dock. Right, guys we got all our tuna flayed up i'm about to do a tuna reuben catch and cook so stay tuned for that now a lot of people ask us what we do with our fish well when you go out in the ocean you spend all that time and money you want to make sure that you preserve your catch so what we're going to do with this guy is we're going to have a nice meal tonight and then we're going to vacuum seal the other half of it 
What I'm gonna be using to vacuum seal our fish today is the Game Saver Outdoorsman vacuum sealing system. And then in the box comes these pre-cut bags like this. And then you also have a roll so you can cut the bags to the desired length you want. Now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you guys how to vacuum seal real quick. Normally you have it in the store option right here. We're gonna flip it down to open and our game saver is plugged in to the power right there. We're gonna take one of these pre-cut bags and I'm gonna take a piece of fish. And very important when you vacuum seal to make sure your fish, your game, whatever you're putting in here is dry because it's gonna ensure that you get a nice seal on whatever you're sealing. You don't want to have your uh, bag internally be wet. So I'm just gonna seal this. This is a nice meal, you know, for two people and we're gonna go give it a go. So I'm going to take the open end of my bag right here, put it into the game saver, and you'll see this little gray tray. We're going to line it up there. I'm going to close the game saver. I'm going to flip it up to the operate mode. The green power light is going to come on, and then we're going to go ahead and hit this vac seal option right here. So let's open it up and see what we got. There we got a beautiful seal. You got no air in there. We have no water in there. It's perfectly sealed. It's ready to go in the freezer. And this machine right here, it'll do 40 consecutive seals. And then you got to give it a little break so it doesn't overheat. Or you can do 120 pounds of game in a row. I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to make your own bags. I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. Okay. Now what you got to do, if you're going to go this route, is you need to seal your bag. So we're going to put it in here. We're going to close it. I'm going to put it to the operate mode. And then I'm going to press seal rather than vac seal. So it's just going to seal that open end. I'm going to open it up. And there we go. Perfectly sealed. No air escaping. You guys can see it's a nice clear connection. So we're going to go ahead and do this one more time. I think that it's a pretty good investment if you are an outdoorsman, a fisherman. These units are all on sale the entire month of June for 17% off. I will have a link in the description box below. So we got two more pieces right there. We're gonna go ahead and put them in. So we got in the open position, we're gonna put it on to operate and then hit vac seal. Just so that easy. I don't know about you guys, but I get satisfaction out of watching that. I think it looks cool. There we go. Now we got a nice seal. And I'm gonna be doing a giveaway on my Instagram, so you guys be sure to check that out. I will have both links to both Instagrams in the description box below. I think if you're a fisherman and outdoorsman, these are definitely a good investment. Brooke and I, whenever we go to the Keys, like if you're someone who does a lot of big trips like we do, we go down to the Keys, the Bahamas, all sorts of stuff, and you come back with a ton of fish, you wanna keep that fish for family dinners or you have friends come to town, you wanna give it away. You don't want all that meat to go to waste. and vacuum sealing your fish will make it last so much longer so we really like them and big thank you to food saver for sponsoring this video now i don't know about you guys but i'm hungry and i'm going to whip up some tuna rubens so stick around all right guys welcome back to another voiceover sit back relax and enjoy today we're making tuna rubens so we got to start with our dressing so i'm making my take on a russian dressing which is going to be mayonnaise sour cream and ketchup. A lot of recipes will call for just mayonnaise, but I think it's a little bit too heavy and I like a, a thicker bodied dressing, not too watery, so I opted for some sour cream. Now we're gonna go ahead and mix that up until we get our proportions right. And I also had a little bit of diced onion and some parsley to cut through all those really fatty flavors. Some freshly ground black pepper. And then we're also gonna add a little bit of horseradish, but I also made a little bit of this dressing without it because my fiance doesn't really like horseradish, but that's up to you guys. So now since we're making sandwiches, we're going to cut our tuna accordingly into sandwich size pieces. I kind of want them into squares so they fit perfectly on our marbled rye bread. So that's just what I'm doing here. Also making sure there's no bones, you know, just your last minute touches, getting rid of any possible bloodlines and stuff like that. And very simply, we're going to season them with blackened seasoning. I love blackened seasoning. I can eat it every single day. So that is what we're doing. Now we have a butter going into a non-stick pan. And sometimes you can put your butter on your fish before you do this. I just put it straight into the pan. 
and a really high heat because you want to really sear those outsides and develop a nice crust with them. So we go ahead and put these on and they don't take very long to cook, maybe two minutes, two to three minutes on each side. Yeah, just like that, that nice brown crust is what you're looking for. And then while I was doing this, Brookie was actually helping me with the bread. I got some marbled rye bread and she did butter on the outside so they would toast nicely. And then we put our Russian dressing on both sides of our bread. So you have it from top to bottom, Swiss cheese, sauerkraut, then you put your fish in. We're going to put them back on the pans and then heat them through. And then we did a little bit more Swiss cheese. So here it is on the pans and the butter's purpose on the outside of the bread is so that it crisps up nicely. So you know you have, uh, it's almost like toast. So it's not soggy. There you go, that nice golden brown color. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now enjoy. Thank you guys so much for watching and I absolutely love the tuna rubens. I actually kind of stole it from Brooke. She's done it before a little bit differently. But you make your own homemade dressing, which I don't do. I bought dressing at the store and it was very, very good. I really enjoyed it. If you guys have never tried it before, it's definitely a creative thing to do with your tuna to make a sandwich. My dad really liked it. It's his favorite sandwich. He just waved it at the camera there. And you know how you guys never really see us eating and like showing it? It's because when you see that food that you've been cooking and filming for so long, you just want to get to it. The last thing I want to do is film and talk about it, but seriously guys, try it. And once again, a huge thank you to Food Saver for sponsoring this video. If you guys like this video, drop a comment below, like the video, and I'll see you guys in that next one. Bye!